Hey, Steve Mignani here with uh, another episode of the Steve Mags YouTube uh, video series. Uh, in this one, let's remember the 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner in 125th scale. Uh, in the day, Johan, which uh, was one of the more popular kit makers back in the day, released this. This is the 1969 Johan Roadrunner. And uh, remember, of course, 1969 was the peak year for Roadrunner sales, starting out in 68 and exploding. In fact, 1969 was the year that uh, Roadrunner was Motor Train Magazine's car of the year. Now, this model kit is the original re-release. These today, uh, 200, 300 bucks. And in about 1974 or 75, Johan re-released the kit here. Uh, these are much less, like maybe 40 or 50 bucks. You might say, you know, why is the original one worth so much more? Well, first off, the box art. I mean, there's no comparison. The beautiful, fanciful cartoon here and sort of the more workmanlike uh, racetrack image here. And on the sides, we see, uh, you know, the, the petty version, which can be built in this kit here versus the more generic parts outlined here. And on the other side, this is interesting. In 1969, Plymouth had a custom Roadrunner called the Probe. We see it on the side of the top box, the original one. Well, for 1974, the same art was used, but air retouched or airbrush retouched by somebody to get away from the original Plymouth Probe look. So interesting stuff going on. It's conceivable maybe that the beep beep character here, which Chrysler paid Warner Brothers Seven Arts reported, I think, either five or ten thousand dollars to license for the entire run of the Roadrunner. Uh, maybe that was not in play when Johan relaunched the kit in 1973-74. Don't know. But inside, the differences are, are multiple. In fact, we open the kits, and these are both largely complete. But we see the original was molded in sort of an off-white tan. The re-release in yellow, which is good or bad. If you're a model builder and you want to paint your models, this yellow ain't no good. You have to prime this with flat white, let that dry thoroughly, and then respray it the color of your choice. By contrast, eh, the off-white is almost ready for whatever paint you want to put on it, although a good model will still prime this. But with that said, there are many other differences. Uh, one big one is the way the wheels are arranged. In the original kit, you get Magnum 500 type wheels, these guys right here, but they're kind of skinny, they're narrow. In the re-release, those same wheels became wider. Here's the Magnum 500, but they're kind of fat. They're very different. So similar, but not the same. And beyond that, the chrome tree was shrunken. The re-release here, here's the original. You get optional mag wheels, Krego SS's, chrome headers, and lots of other custom bits that are not there in the re-release of 1974. Going further, there are little differences in the two kits. The original model kit came with a very nice set of tires, and these are them right here. These are the Goodyear uh, sort of a, oh, these are tires that came from the Chrysler turbine car, which was launched in 1964. And again, these are original to the 69 original release, whereas the re-release came with uh, big fat uh, two-piece tires. Oops, kind of like these here. So anyway, lots of little tiny differences. Now here's the thing. The word is the tooling for the Johan Roadrunner was lost a long time ago. Apparently, Johan, here's the logo right here, which stood for John Hanley, H-A-E-N-L-E, -E, Hanley, uh, not Johan or Johann Sebastian Bach, but John Hanley. Well, Johan started, I think, in 1947, and one of their other businesses was providing plastic parts for Cadillac and other car makers, knobs for dashboards, heater switches, stuff like that. Well, the word is that toward the end, in the mid-70s, late 70s, early 80s, when it was fizzling and fading out, uh, the word was that um, a lot of disgruntled employees or dishonest employees would take the tooling, the beryllium scrap value of those tooling was high, They'd sell the tooling to these old model kits out the back door. And as a result, these tools, these kits may never be seen again because the tooling doesn't exist. Or does it? Which brings us to this. This is the monogram Rommel's Rod, right? Now, this model kit is a re-release. Here's a, a cool comic book ad for the original one in color from 1969 or 70. Tom Daniel was on staff at Monogram Models. He was their, one of their most prolific designers of tools. And again, it's not Tom Daniels, it's singular, Daniel. And I think as of today, November, 20, or November 6th, 2021, I think Tom Daniel is still very much alive and well, which is cool. 
With that said, the original tooling for this kit was lost in the 1970s. So that brings us back to the Johan problem, the Roadrunner problem. How can you re-release something that doesn't exist? Well, in 2019, I believe it was, Ravel Monogram actually digitized an original kit and re-released it right here. This is the Monogram Rommel's Rod, but there's a twist. Some of the parts on this kit are different from the originals. I've compared the original parts trees to the originals, and in some cases, the way the parts were arranged are a little bit different, and some parts are spot on the same. But one thing that is different is the valve cover on that big Mercedes six-cylinder engine, this thing right here. The word Daimler and Mercedes-Benz is not on the new one, probably for licensing reasons. But here's the thing. This model kit was scanned from an original kit, which tells us that where there's a will, there's a way. If somebody were to scan that somebody being maybe Tom Lowe at round two or a, an enterprising a model kit manufacturer, if you were to scan this kit and scan these trees of parts in 3D, then with a 3D printer on an industrial scale, you could absolutely recreate kits like the Rommel's Rod, which, which has been done, or rare kits like the Roadrunner using modern technology. And again, you don't need the original tooling. That stuff weighed tons. And again, it deteriorated over time. You don't even need that stuff. Just get an original model kit, scan it, and you could actually re-release an old kit that otherwise would not be available. So that's uh, pretty intriguing. All it takes is money and lots of it. But let's hope that somebody watches this video and maybe gets the idea to scan old kits 3D print them, re-release them. If that happens, I guarantee you the modeling community and hot rodders and car people in general will beat a path to your door. Well, that's it for this video, but if you like this one, be sure to check out and subscribe to the Steve Mignotti YouTube channel, and uh, we'll be back with a lot more.